Welcome back to the Ego Actus reading series, Dramatic Voices. This is Laura, and I am thrilled to be speaking with Julie and Amy, the folks working on Face It, which goes live on Saturday, February 17th. We had a little bit of trouble scheduling this interview live, but both Julie and Amy were wonderful in conducting this interview as a duo and then sending the file to me. It was wonderful to hear the entire interview for the first time, and now I'm thrilled that with after a little bit of editing and setting it all up for podcast form, we have our next interview. So folks, sit back and relax, and please enjoy Julie and Amy as they discuss Face It. Julie, I'm so excited to have a conversation with you about your play. Thanks. It's so nice to meet you. We meet you. Yeah, eating you, meeting you online. So first, uh, tell me the name of the play and what inspired you to write it. Uh, it's called Face It. I just think ageism is so prevalent in every way, um, particularly around women. I think men get away with a hell of a lot more. Unfortunately, that doesn't seem to be changing with any great rapidity. And um, I think it's a universal problem. And this is a feminist fable, if you will. And we all all deal with it at one point or another. And it's also the self-loathing that comes out of living in a culture that elevates youth way beyond anything that comes with maturity, like wisdom, judgment, uh, skill set that increases all the rest of it. <laughs> so I, I think that I've been thinking about that whole subject for a long time <laughs> as I age. Yeah, so, I love that idea of a feminist fable. It also has a lot of other influences, though. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about the stylistic choices that you made? Mm, I think I really wanted to write something that was high farce wild because I think it's I really love the sort of um, hybridization of something that goes to that uh, extreme that also is around serious issues and is grounded in real characters and real emotion and real experience. Um, There's something in the play, I won't give it away, that is uh, near the end around uh, an experience with a diet doctor, which comes right out of my life. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I'm very serious about it, but I also see, I mean, for me, what where where comedy lies is in the extremes, the extremes of, of pain and the extremes of absurdity. Yeah. So for me, that's really important stuff. Yeah. I think one of the things that's, that makes this play so funny and where the humor lies is that the stakes are so high for the main character, whose name is Eliza, that these absurd choices that she makes or this absurd behavior that is shown that is so comedic for the audience, it is coming out of a real place of desire and high stakes and the problems that she's facing are deeply rooted in our society being judged on how she looks on weight on age on youth being dismissed for looking one way or another Uh, these are things that all women deal with and it is impossible to hit the mark in a way that you know is supposed to be the correct way to be as a woman in society and so with her fighting those forces that are coming at her there is real opportunity for humor in that and uh, it becomes a really enjoyable way for the audience to digest all of that heaviness how do you feel i know we should be asking you for how you feel about directing this style, this kind of piece, the subject matter? Where where are you where are you coming from? 
Uh, I love this kind of, of piece where you take real characters with real stakes that are, are rooted in um, really deeply held beliefs. And you put them in these situations that are heightened and that are poetic in some ways and are absurd in others, but their behavior comes from the truth of what it is that they're they're dealing with. Uh, it is fun to direct a piece that is so high energy. I think one of the things that we'll be working on when we get to rehearsal is pace. And the pace oh, yeah. is so, so much fun. It is a wild ride. And the audience gets to figuratively and literally go on a ride with these characters. Everybody is on this bus together. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, it's a lot of fun. It's also a lot of fun to have a larger ensemble where we have mm, eight actors plus someone reading stage directions who's very active as well in the storytelling and I think altogether they play around 30 characters so that's going to be oh my God. <laughs> I must have lost my mind when I wrote this play that's what you wrote <laughs> like, you know some of the characters are are more you know what you call like highlights they come in as a grace note and some of them are more meaty uh, but everybody gets a chance to play something really interesting in this play. Uh, I hope so. Yeah. I hope so. Yeah. Uh, what brought you to the theater? Specifically, what caught your eye about writing? That's a direct question from our interviewer. Uh, that is true. Mm -hmm. I got to writing um, through acting, which mm -hmm. makes the most sense, right? But I was uh, part of a... Um, a class at HB Studios where we actors were volunteering to, uh, you know, get up and cold read the work of, of writers. Um, and in that context, I started looking at the writing and thinking about, because I was privy to the steps people were taking and the assignments and the exercises. And I finally said to myself, you should be writing. You should definitely be writing. And that's what got me started. And that's what, oh, at like least I guess around 15 years ago. And then I ended up um, going back to school and getting a master's degree in writing for stage and screen. Oh, so exciting. Where did you get your master's from? Leslie University. It was a very good program. Wow, very yeah. interesting. We had such similar tracks. I, I think a lot of people come into theater through the performance because that's the most visible uh, entryway. But I remember my early acting teachers, you know, saying that, you know, I, I was always paying attention to the whole story, not just my part. So I was always, you know, I would self-direct, you know, I would ask questions where like, oh, but if my character does that, then it's going to affect this character that way. And then that lets them respond this way. And they would always tell me, you know, you should think about directing because you're always looking at the big picture. And uh, I was always fighting for the whole play, not just for my part. That's um, so great. <laughs> <laughs> That's really great. And may I say, I already see how dramaturgically astute you are. Lovely. And I very much admire that and appreciate it. Because, you know, we, we're reading this to hear it in quotes and to, and to expand our community. You and I didn't know each other before this moment in time. But if there's not an element in which we get to think about where the play could go based on what we discover with each other, uh, you know, why not? That's a great part of the process. Yeah, I think one of the lovely things that Joan and Bruce are doing with this series is bringing together a lot of people in our community. You know, I'm bringing some actors I know in, but you're also introducing me to some other actors. I didn't know you before this playwriting series, and I'm looking at the other rosters of people that are working on these plays, and it it's just lovely especially after we spent 
three, four years sort of working in isolation and trying to figure out how we're going to work together again. Yeah. And they've put together a series like this where we are connecting in so many different ways. You gotta love that. Mm -hmm. yeah. How do you hope the audience responds to the show? Well, let me ask you that, director. How do you hope they respond to the show? <laughs> I, well, I'll tell you what I think too, but please. Yeah, well, I think there's a, a couple different responses that I would hope happen over time. The first response is that I want people to laugh. I think this play is hysterical. I, I want people to feel like they've gone on a, a real journey with the character, particularly Eliza, the main character. Uh, but it, it really should immediately hit people uh, like a big guffaw, like big, big laughs. And I want people to feel like they've had fun. And in that fun, you know, it's going back to that George Bernard Shaw quote that, you know, you get people laughing so that their mouths open up and you can spoon feed the truth in Love i'm that. paraphrasing horribly <laughs> it's okay yeah it's okay terribly paraphrasing that but the idea of you know when people laugh their mouths are open and then they're more receptive to the truth it can come in we can spoon feed them that truth and the takeaway after you've had a good time and you laugh I want people to find those moments in the play where they maybe look across the room and lock eyes with a woman and have that moment of understanding and recognition. We've all been through something like this. We've all had these experiences that are so universal and you feel so impossible when you're in them. Uh, and then I want people to walk away understanding that on a deeper level and maybe being more kind to women in particular and more empathetic, which is always the goal I think of theater is it's it's an an empathy machine. It, it's how we exercise our emotional intelligence. Uh, I want people to treat women a little bit better with a little more kindness, a little less judgment, a little more understanding that what we are going through is, it, it is just impossible, you know? It is impossible. Yeah. It is. I mean, I think also, and I love what you've said, I'm, I'm with you. It's being kinder to ourselves as women. Mm, mm -hmm. You know, giving ourselves that kind of compassion that we need because it's, it's rough. It's rough. Yeah. Aging in this culture being imperfect physically in this culture and who is not imperfect by some Barbieized standard of it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we all have the that to grapple with. Oh, that's so, so beautiful. Yeah. Um, yeah, you got to the point of it really succinctly. That's why you're a writer. <laughs> Thank you for that. Uh and thank uh, you for being my director. All right, thank you for writing this incredible play. A big thank you once again to Julie and Amy for handling this interview as a duo. It was such a pleasure to hear it. And I hope that everyone is looking forward to seeing Face It again. That's Saturday, February 17th. And tickets are on sale now at egoactus.com. Again, that is egoactus.com. Thank you so much, Julie and Amy, and I look forward to seeing you all for episode three.